Hello and welcome to Spirit Forest. This is a series of videos that I'm doing regarding my heritage, my Viking heritage, Scandinavian heritage that I have here. I have my daughter Kyla with me and what we're gonna do is we're gonna cook some lefsa, which is a Scandinavian food and also some um, pickled herring. When actually, you don't really actually cook that, it's already raw, but you're gonna watch me eat it and maybe Kyla? <laughs> She loves Lessa. She's a huge fan of Lessa. So um, let's get started. I want to thank you for joining me today in my kitchen. Usually I film outside. Uh, today I'm filming inside. I have my daughters this weekend and it has snowed eight to six, six to eight inches outside or so, somewhere around there. So I thought it was a good opportunity to stay inside. Um, we are going to cook left up first and then we're going to um, eat some pickled herring and uh, you'll see what that looks like. It's uh, basically raw fish. Okay, so I am in my Viking outfit. If you're not familiar with my Viking outfit, I'll kind of show you briefly, because I felt that it was kind of nice to have, yeah, no shoes. That's how I roll. Um, I just felt that it was kind of nice to wear my Viking outfit as I cook a uh, kind of Viking food, Scandinavian food. Okay, this is what we're gonna make uh, today, is we're gonna make some lefsa, and we have actually made a couple just ahead of time. There we go, this is kind of what it looks like. If it will focus, come on, Canon, you can do this. It's lefsa, it kind of is like a Scandinavian tortilla. Can't think of another way to say it, but that's kind of what it's like. And uh, you could eat it as like a dessert. Um, you can put some um, cinnamon and butter in there. My other daughter, she puts, my older daughter, Madison, um, she puts jelly on hers and eats it that way. Um, Kyla and I, is my younger daughter, she and I, we eat it with butter. So um, it's really nice to have. And I'm gonna give you a little bit of a history as we make this about um, where Lefsa came from. This is my beautiful daughter, Kyla that um, lefsa is her favorite thing in the world. Let's show off your um, lefsa apron. This was given to her by her grandma. And what does it say? Let's roll lefsa. <laughs> I think that my mom got that at the, what is it called? The host fest in, um, Nor or in, in North Dakota. So I think somewhere around there. Next to Kyla is our potato, kind of like a mashed potato. Um, what we put in there is that we have five potatoes that were whole and boiled. And then what we did is we peeled the potatoes after they were cooked. And then we put them through a ricer, right? Why don't you show them what the ricer looks like, Kyla? The ricer has this part where the potatoes will go through and it'll come out all nice and soft and not just mushed. And then after we have all the um, potatoes riced, I think, I think that maybe that's the right word for it, once we have them all riced, then we would put um, some condensed milk in there and I put about a half a cup of condensed milk. Mm -hmm. 
and then I put about two to three tablespoons of butter and a teaspoon of salt and um, what else did we put in there Kyla? Um, we added flour just now to it. Oh that's what we're gonna do now yeah but what's in that there's no flour in there yet so what I do is then I have it sit overnight and so I want the I want it to be cold um, and so now is when we add the flour. So you add the flour the next day. And so that's why we're doing this on the following day is what we're going to do. So Kyla, why don't you go ahead and empty that up and put it in the bowl and then we'll show you, um, how we add flour to it and how much flour. So this is not all four potatoes right here. This is just a quarter of it. Um, we just kind of divided it up and we're going to put about a half a cup of flour in that. Okay, she puts a half a cup of flour in there and then she's gonna mush it up with her hands. Don't worry, her hands are clean. We trust Kyla. <laughs> so let me give you a little history of lefse. So lefse is a Norwegian food. Um, I have made it with potatoes. However, the potato was introduced to Norway until about 250 years ago. So as much as I'd like to say this was a Viking food, um, they did not have potatoes. The um, they did use um, these kind of like, it's like kind of more of a flat bread and where they just use flour. And so during the winter time, they would make these little, it was kind of more like a cracker. Um, now the potato makes it a lot softer and stuff. And so again, once the potatoes were introduced, they started using potatoes with it. So once she has it all mixed together and you kind of want it to not stick to your hands. Now, my mom and I, we make it just a little bit different to each their own. There's a, lot, there's a lot that you can play with. Oh, I forgot to tell you that I added sugar to this. Um, I added sugar to this recipe. The sugar is what makes it taste like lepsa. Um, that was not on in my mom's cookbook that um, she gave me, but it is something that we add into lepsa, and that's really what gives it its flavor is the sugar. And when I say add sugar, I think it was only about two to three tablespoons, and that was five potatoes. Did I say four? It was five potatoes, right, Kyla? Yeah. Yep, she's my lepsa girl. She's the one that tells me how to cook lepsa. She cooks it all the time with her grandma, so she's pretty good at this. So once we get it to the consistency we want, again, I put about a half a cup in there, but if you need to, you know, change it a little bit, you can do that. I say, if you're going to try this, keep playing with it. It is so good. So, so good. We're going to roll some of this into a little ball and we're going to weigh it. And so I have my little scale here that is all nice and protected, but you can't see in the camera, but I'm going to have it be about uh, two to two and a half ounces per ball. And then what we're going to do is we're going to roll it and then we are going to cook it on the skillet and the skillet I turn to 375. So again, it's about two to um, two and a half ounces. That's a ball about this size. Um, and it rolls up into something that looks a little bit like that. It, they're kind of, they're not, they don't have to be round. You could just play with them. Oh my gosh, it's so good. Oh, it's so good. Oh, I'm not wearing an apron. Okay, let's put it on the flour. Let's roll it out. Okay, you see here, my mom has given me a nice setup. Um, it's a Norwegian board, and, and again, you, I don't know if you can see it too well, but there's actually little lines that go around in a circle, but you really want this to be like really covered in flour because you don't want this sticking to it. You see how nice and how the consistency of this is? Okay, so let me roll up my sleeves a little bit. Well, it doesn't really roll. Come on, you can do it. All right, I'm just gonna get messy, I know this. Um, here is the, the um, rolling pin. It does look a little bit different. Can you see the little dots in there? You want the flour to get in all of these dots. So you're constantly adding flour and the flour is getting embedded inside this little roll as well. I don't put a lot of pressure down because these flatten out really well. They're not like cookies. Where cookies, you've got to put a little bit more effort to make it really nice and flat. Okay. 
Kyla's in the background, she's making some more. So you're making it really, really thin. And then what we have is we have these little sticks. Um, I don't know if you can see. It's flat on one side and it's kind of bowed on this other side. Um, I don't know if you see it. So Kyla has her stick, which is over here, because she it's a teamwork. It's teamwork. Doesn't that look like my my flowers on my deck? Uh, and you'll see again, it's flat on one side and it's just a little bowed. And this is something that would be really fun to make from the wood on my land as well. Okay, <clears throat> so what I'm gonna do is that you slide it under. And this is how you pick it up. That's how you pick it up. To put it back down, you just roll it out. You don't have to flip these. I'm just, just showing you how you can pick them up. But what we're gonna do next is we're gonna put it on the skillet over here. I'm seriously getting flour all over my camera. <laughs> That's another thing with making left, so you gotta be prepared to um, get messy. So this is really hot right now. So this is about 375 degrees is what I have it at. I'm going to pick up that piece of less uh, again and I just roll it on. I don't put any oil on the skillet at all. It won't stick. Trust me. This is, this I have right here. This is just for my lepsa. I use it like twice a year just for lepsa. Um, I love it. Okay, you're gonna see little bumps on here. Now, what gives it its brown color is the sugar. Um, and then you can see a lot of the steam and stuff because it is very moist. So you'll see over here, Kyla is making um, some more um, balls for me, but you wanna make sure that these don't get to room temperature. You want them to be cooled. So what we're gonna do is um, she's gonna make these and then when she's gonna stick them back in the fridge, and then we'll take them out of the fridge as we make them. Because if they start getting really warm, um, your left is gonna end up breaking up and you don't want that. It is very fragile. Okay, so I don't know how long it's been on there. Maybe a minute to two minutes, something like that. And you just flip it and turn it again. You see those nice brown spots on there? That's kind of what you're looking for. Are those nice brown spots. Once you have flipped it, you really only need to put it on for just a little bit before it needs to go off, and then I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, now it's ready. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring it over here. Oh, this is the piece I keep nibbling from. Um, I have wax paper to um, protect it. What it does, it basically, it steams itself on here and it makes it even softer. It makes it a really soft like bread. And then, maybe take a little bite. Mmm, that is good. And then we keep it and it starts steaming. Kyla and I are gonna be this production team and start working on making all this lepsa. I think we have about um, eight rolls or so to, to make out of that little batch and uh, we're gonna have you watch some of it. But in the meantime, Madison has been practicing, and that is my older daughter, she's 14 years old. She has been practicing a Norwegian song for you that she would like to sing for you. So I'm gonna have her sing while we um, make some lesa. And um, just in her defense, she doesn't know the Norwegian language. She uh, would like to learn it, but, so, but she's gonna sing a Norwegian song. So. Be nice. <laughs>
Bon appetit. Mm. Mm. So what I put in mine was just butter and I like folding mine, well, I like folding mine like a pizza. What do you have in yours? Oh, cinnamon, sugar, and honey. Mm. Mine is butter, cinnamon, and sugar. Good stuff. Mm hmm if you have any questions on how to make lefse, let us know. We, we make it every year, um, sometimes twice a year. So <laughs> it's good stuff. We usually do it around the holiday, but uh, we had a special occasion today and wanted to share it with you today. Um, one of the other things I wanted to show you was um, pickled herring, which is another Norwegian food that we are gonna try out. Madison's still eating her lepsa. Um, we are going to attempt to eat another Norwegian meal, um, which is um, pickled herring, which is a uh, raw herring that has been pickled. There you go, it's nice and focused for you so you can see it. You can find this at most grocery stores. Uh, what is included in this is wild herring, water, onions, cane sugar, vinegar, wine salt, and natural fla flavorings. Um, it's raw fish. It's raw fish that has been pickled. And uh, so we're going to attempt to eat this. Mm, it's nasty. <laughs> it's nasty. You smell it? It smells like... It's, it smells... <laughs> it, here, it's what it looks like in the can. Let me show you what it looks like on a plate. That's what it looks like on a plate, little little pieces of herring here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to break this up. I have a little cracker. <clears throat> Just kinda, this is kinda the crackers my mom would have when she had people over, so I grabbed one of these crackers. And then I'm gonna grab the little piece of this raw herring. So here we go, you can see, you can see if it would focus for me in this <laughs> Madison. <laughs> <laughs> she likes to be in attention. So, we got some pickled herring and a cracker. You ready? <laughs> you can eat it. Are you sure? You gonna try it? No, I don't like fish food or cat food. Yeah. I'm just kidding, you guys. I love this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I tried it like two times. Just so you know, I'm gonna gross you out. I was raised on this pickled herring. AKA cat food. <laughs> I order it, I get it all the yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. Like every time you go to the grocery store, you're like, oh, I need to get some pickled herring. Yeah, it costs like five bucks. So, yeah. So, pickled herring, every time my mom had a party, she had this pickled herring out, and I would be starving as a kid, and this was the only thing that was out to eat. And so, um, yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. Do you like it a lot? No, I it's mean, part of your heritage. You gotta at least try it. That's just a cracker. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> Who's next? <laughs> it's really good on a cracker. A lot of times I'll just put a, a Ritz cracker on there, but. Yeah, I like the raw fish. I like sushi, so <laughs> I, I'm good. <laughs> the next thing, and, and I didn't mention this before, but I have one other thing to, to talk about in regards to Norwegian food that I was fed when I was a kid. Um, other than the Swedish meatballs, which are awesome, and there's sometime maybe I'll do a video on that, um, is uh, lutefisk. Have you guys heard of lutefisk? <laughs> You've never tasted it, so you have no idea, yeah, because I won't lutefisk. have lutefisk at my house. I mean, it is the most nasty thing ever. And um, when I was a kid, my grandpa would make lutefisk and Swedish meatballs, and we would have some of this um, pickled herring. And cow and, tongue. 
No, we didn't. No, that was my dad. That wasn't my grandpa. Uh. Um, but it was. Uh, so let me tell you, because I had to look it up to remember, because it's been a long time since I was a little girl that I had to eat lutefisk, and it's nasty. So I'm just gonna read really fast what lutefisk is. And also, just so you know, Kyle and I went to the store to go find some, and the lady at the fish counter had no idea what I was talking about. Okay, so lutefisk is a dry cod that has been soaked in lye for several days to rehydrate it and then it's rinsed off in cold water to r remove the lye and then boiled or baked and served with butter, pepper, and salt. It's nasty. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. So I gotta tell you a story. I my, my grandpa was all about like you clean your plate, you know, that was kind of like his time too that, you know, you're lucky you have food, you need to clean your plate. And so I would have to sit at the table until I completed eating my lutefisk. Well, <laughs> I've never done that to you guys. I've had to sit at my table to eat broccoli and lutefisk. And I Broccoli's just, I don't, I don't like broccoli either. Broccoli. Anyways. So I have come up with a, I gotta show you what I did when I was a kid. Um, you gotta see this. Okay, um, <laughs> um, I'm at a weird angle, but, and I'm a lot bigger than I was when I was a little kid. But I would have to sit in my, in my chair at the dining room table, and, uh, and I could not leave my chair until I ate my lutefisk. And so I told them, I said, I'm not going to eat it. And I was pretty adamant about that, you know? And they said, well, then you are not leaving your chair. So there were times, and I didn't sleep all night, but there were times, and this is why people ask me, I can, I can sleep anywhere, that I would find a way to curl up into a little ball and sleep in my chair. Now, obviously, I'm a lot bigger now. <laughs> <laughs> but I would be able to curl up into this little ball on the chair and sit there and um, and sleep. And uh, I wasn't sleeping there all night. In fact, I think that um, I was there for hours, though. Uh, my grandpa was pretty adamant about you got to eat your lutefisk. And uh, I was pretty adamant about I won't. And there were multiple times where I got sick on the table from eating that. So I guess my story is... Um, don't try lutefisk. <laughs> and you know, what? one of these days I'm gonna buy it, and so you guys, you girls, can know what it is that I'm talking about. I'll just look at it and see. <laughs> yes, and then you will learn to sit and sleep in your chair, because that's what I did. I would just sleep in my chair. So come over here, Kyla. Let's say goodbye to everybody. I want to thank you guys for joining us today on our snowy day here in Colorado so we stayed inside so thanks for joining us um, and we hope to see you guys on the next video if there's anything that you want me to to cook this is not a cooking channel whatsoever but <laughs> but if there's anything you want me to try that that might be Norwegian Viking like um, I would love to try it you know put a comment below and uh, we'll, we'll try it out, except Ludafisk. No, because then I'm going to be sitting in this chair all night long sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> I was about her, her height at that time. So again, thank you. Appreciate you watching. And I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye. Bye. You going to try it? Go, go for it. Let's see if you could do it. <laughs> you got to be really flexible. So you got you to put this leg up like this like that and then this head would go right there yeah that's about what I would do and I would sleep for hours there mm. <laughs> so I didn't have to eat my lutefisk <laughs> <laughs>